I shall miss that when we leave Casablanca. It's gracious of you to share it with me. Good day, ma'am. Monsieur, good day. <laughs> You're a man, please. No beating about the bush. Right to the point. Dawkins quotes Lee Smolin extensively in The God Delusion. To his credit, Smolin acknowledges in the prologue of his book, The Life of the Cosmos, that what he's presenting in the book is a frank speculation, if you will, a fantasy. This fantasy is inspired by diverse sources and issues, some physical, some mathematical, and some biological, and others philosophical. Smolin didn't like the odds of our cosmos being created by chance. Ten years after Hawking suggested the first second after the Big Bang had one chance in 10 to the 17th power to produce a life-friendly cosmos, Smolin wrote the odds were really much worse. One chance in 10 to the 60th power. He wrote, With this information we see that the most interesting question is not whether the universe eventually collapses or not. It is to understand why it is there at all. If the initial parameters were picked at random, then it is overwhelmingly probable that the universe would either have recollapsed by now or by now be essentially empty. The probability for one of the other of these things not to have happened by now is this same one part in 10 to the 60th. If we want to have a rational understanding of the universe, this is another fact that needs an explanation. How unlikely is one chance in 10 to the 60th power? It's a billion times more impossible than 10 to the 50th power, which is considered by mathematicians as the limit of possibility. Mathematicians generally consider any event with a probability of less than one chance in 10 to the 50th power as having a zero probability, which means it's impossible. As Emile Borel said, the impossibility of one chance in 10 to the 50th power is comparable to the certainty with which we attribute the existence of the world. So how big a number is 10 to the 60th power? It's so big that if all the computers on Earth did nothing but count numbers, they could never count that high. The fastest computer on Earth can count a quadrillion times per second. If every person on Earth, say 6 billion people, had one of these supercomputers, and all 6 billion supercomputers were linked together, they could count six billion times one quadrillion times a second. In 24 hours, their combined effort would count up to 10 to the 26th power. In a year, they would have counted up to 10 to the 28th power. In a thousand years, they would have counted up to about 10 to the 31st power. In 10,000 years, they would have counted up to about 10 to the 32nd power. In 13.7 billion years, they would have counted up to about 10 to the 42nd power. The 6 billion supercomputers could never count up to 10 to the 60th power. You would need to use 10 to the 29th power supercomputers, each counting a quadrillion times a second, for 13.7 billion years to count up to 10 to the 60th power. The only problem is there isn't enough raw materials in the entire cosmos to make 10 to the 29th power supercomputers. So, it is impossible to count up to 10 to the 60th power. Now, 10 to the 60th power is way too big a number to understand unless we break it into bite-sized pieces. Let's say that each drop of water on Earth is a factory that makes cosmos. There are 600 cosmos factories in an 8-ounce glass, 48,000 cosmos factories in a bathtub, and 576 million Cosmos factories in an Olympic-sized swimming pool. It would take three quadrillion Olympic-sized swimming pools to fill the Pacific Ocean. The total amount of Cosmos factories on Earth, if each Cosmos factory were a drop of water, is 10 to the 17th power. So there are 10 to the 17th power Cosmos factories on Earth. Let's say each grain of sand on Earth represents 13.7 billion years. The typical hourglass contains 5 million grains of sand. That would be 5 million times 13.7 billion years if we used a typical hourglass, which would represent 68 quadrillion years. 
But our timekeeping device has all of the sand on Earth. So, our device has 10 to the 24th power grains of sand, with each grain of sand representing 13.7 billion years. Just to make it easy to understand, let's say each of the cosmos factories produced just one cosmos every second for 13.7 billion years. Let's see how many grains of sand are needed to produce 10 to the 60th power cosmos. Here's the math. 10 to the 60th power cosmos divided by 10 to the 17th power cosmos factories divided by 13.7 billion years divided by 365 days divided by 24 hours divided by 60 minutes divided by 60 seconds equals 2314583356479111 that's the amount of grains of sand we will have to use to reach 10 to the 60th power cosmos. But wait a second, there's not enough sand on Earth. Even if every drop of water produced a cosmos every second for 13.7 billion years for every grain of sand on Earth, there wouldn't be enough drops of water and grains of sand to make 10 to the 60th power cosmos. But according to Smolin, there are even more factors that make our cosmos more unlikely if there is no creator. The 10 to the 60th power improbability was based on the precise expansion of the cosmos. Even more difficult to explain are the laws and constants that Dawkins referred to earlier in the video. On page 45 of The Life of the Cosmos, in a chapter appropriately called The Miracle of the Stars, Smolin wrote, we should ask just how probable is it that a universe created by randomly choosing the parameters will contain stars. Given what we have already said, it is simple to estimate this probability. For those readers who are interested, the arithmetic is in the notes. The number, in round numbers, comes to about one chance in 10 to the 229th power. Now this number is impossible to understand. The only thing we can do is use the biggest number that has any relevance at all, and that is the number of particles in the cosmos, which is 10 to the 80th power. If each particle in our cosmos, which is 10 to the 80th power particles, were a cosmos factory, and each cosmos factory produced a quadrillion cosmos per second, after 13.7 billion years you would only have made 10 to the 112th power cosmos. Each particle of our universe would have to make a quadrillion cosmos per second for an additional quadrillion times a 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 quadrillion years to make 10 to the 229th power cosmos. Black holes, because you need black holes to make the to to get to get to get to give birth to a baby birth to a baby a baby universes. Honey, I'm so proud of you, and I love you so much. I hate you! You did this to me, you miserable piece of brain shit, slime-sucking son of a bitch! Get out! Get out! Do the one! Take a peek. What is it? Come on, Junior, say something to Daddy. Say something to Daddy.